Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. So, this is going to be a car video. I haven't done a car video in a while. Um, I am driving, obviously I'm driving, but it's a little, um, I hope it's not too noisy, because I know it's been like noisy recently, so I'm been, I need a new um, mount, or I need to tighten this one or something, I don't know, there's like something up with the mount, but uh, I'm not going too fast, so hopefully it's not too I wanted to do this video because I had a really interesting conversation with one of my best friends recently and I thought it was something you guys might enjoy. We were talking about, um, my friend is preparing to, not this year, but I think next year, she's preparing to send her daughter to kindergarten, which I can't believe, time fucking flies. And, you know, we've just been talking about uh, different programs and things of that nature and she said that she's thinking of sending her daughter to a dual language immersion school and the reason why I thought that was like a super interesting sort of topic was that she feels like it would be um, competitive maybe is the word that I want for her to put her daughter in this school where she will be learning English and another language. I think the options were like English and French or English and Spanish. I know that these dual immersion programs are uh, really, really, really popular. Um, and especially as the sort of makeup of the world and of the United States uh, changes, more and more people are, I think it's duolingual, is that what it is? Duolingual, uh, bilingual as opposed to, or tr even trilingual, you know, as opposed to monolingual, which most Americans are, we only speak English. And so she was just saying, you know, I feel like it would just be good for her to start, you know, in um, kindergarten or pre, might maybe even pre-K. She was like, I think it would just be good for her to start in pre-kindergarten in a program where, you know, from when she she's young she could be exposed to another language and she could pick it up um, you know she was like you know moving forward in life I think it would be great for her to have you know that skill and to have that sort of competitive edge when it comes time for school and jobs which number one it's wild that as a parent I don't know if this is like the norm or if it's been the norm but it's wild that as a parent you have to think so far in advance right like uh, my friend's kid is like two right and I have another friend one of my other best friends that also has a, a kid that you know they're thinking about school district my friend and her boyfriend they're thinking about school districts for her son her son is like at least three years away from school but they're already thinking about school districts because they want him to be in a majority black school district that also is you know like a good school so they're starting their research from now because they're like they don't their son is like very bright and they're like all the schools that are being recommended are all white schools and we just don't want to put our child in that type of environment so it's very interesting um you know as black parents how far, number one, I think how far ahead you have to think. And I mean, I guess this is parenting in general, but it's just compounded even further when you are a black parent and you're raising a black child. You know, my friend said, I think it would just be great for her to sort of have this edge of knowing another language because, you know, we have to just do so much and do so much more. Um, but I know that these programs are becoming much more popular because a lot of people are deciding, you know, that we need to know more than one language. I also have um, a, a good friend that's a subscriber, shout out to Isaiah, if you see this video, you might not because you would be busy, that um, is fluent in Mandarin, right? And he's black, he's black American, and he actually studied Mandarin in college, became fluent in it, and ended up getting a job and moving abroad to China um, because he does speak, you know, fluent Mandarin and it, it ended up turning into a job opportunity. I know uh, several other people as well that, you know, went to China or studied abroad in China have fucking, you know, found uh, job opportunities, business opportunities because their economy is like booming right now and that it was made possible for them because they speak Mandarin. So it is very interesting because we hear a lot of talk about, um, you know, a global economy and just expanding your skill set and expanding your horizons and I find it very interesting do you guys think that like black kids nowadays need to be bilingual or trilingual um, and if you do think so I also want to know what languages do you think uh, they should know I see a lot of people saying Spanish just because the Spanish uh, the Latinx and the Spanish speaking population is 
rapidly, rapidly, rapidly rising. But I've also seen a lot of people say that the kids should learn Mandarin because China is becoming this like global economic powerhouse, this superpower. And it's like I know someone, like I know someone, like not like a friend of a friend or you know like an urban legend. Like I know someone that became fluent in Mandarin and did end up getting a job out of that. So I just find it really interesting to sort of like think. Uh, you guys know like I don't have children, but I'm not against it. <laughs> um, for those of you that have kids or have thought about having kids, you know. What do you think, I want to know, like, what do you guys think is sort of necessary for um, black children, you know, to, to have as a skill set? Do you think that black children should be bilingual? I also know people that are sort of on the flip side of that, um, that say, you know, well, well, America is not somewhere like Montreal. Montreal, for example, has an extremely, and it might be parts of other, uh, other parts of Canada that do this as well, but has like an extremely high French speaking population. So they have like a dual national language. It's like English, uh, well, not national because Montreal is a city, but they have like a dual language. It's like English, French, right? So it's like English, French. Everything is in English and French, English and French, English and French. Here in the United States, we kind of have little pockets of that. Like you have Chinatown where you'll go and everything will be in a certain language or, you know, um, I, everybody knows like I used to live in Washington Heights and like everything in Washington Heights is in Spanish. All the signs are in Spanish, everything like that. So it is kind of interesting, you know, to also sort of hear, I'm going over some like really fucked up road so it might be getting loud now but it is also interesting to sort of um hear the argument that well you know america the united states is not a dual language place i also find it to be a very interesting sort of pushback argument which is that uh the expectation that um black children or black americans um or even i've even seen people say you know that in, that that uh, that black people in general have to be uh, bilingual is an unfair expectation because we are a, you know, we are a mono language country as of right now. So I see people saying like, well, if you're going to have these expectations that people need to learn another language, then it needs to start being introduced, you know, in the public school system, not in like these special dual immersion programs that kids have to sort of, you know, get into or get chosen in a lottery or, you know, wait on these fucking year long. I know somebody else that has a fucking baby that they're on a year long wait list for daycare for their baby or next year, next year they have a baby. They will not be able to put their baby in the daycare until their baby is like a fucking toddler because that's how long the wait list is which we can also get into like child care and these wait lists and like how everything is just being like super super privatized to the point where you know if you have the time to be on the list if you have the money if you have the resources then you have access to these programs um which is just a larger part of capitalism which is a larger part of classism which is a larger part of this caste system that we have in pretty much you know fucking in effect right now people try to act like everything is all fine and sweet and everybody has an equal opportunity and an equal shot which is not true right and so it's just very interesting also to hear this sort of pushback against like well not all kids can get into a dual immersion program and so it's not fair to have like a dual language requirement for like jobs and you know for for that to be getting into this expectation of you you have to have this to be prepared for the world because not everybody's going to have the opportunity a lot of you guys know that i also used to live in miami and something that i found to be just like amazing that i had never seen before when i lived in miami when i first moved to south florida and i was looking for a job it's true like all the jobs were like you have to be bilingual you have to speak spanish you have to speak spanish you have to speak spanish which is also wild because like there's a large non-speaking spanish population in miami like there's a good amount of black americans there there's a good amount of haitians there and it does feel like it's almost anti black in a sense because it's like you have these white cubans that are spanish speakers that run shit that don't like fucking black people they hate fucking haitians and they hate black americans and it's like you know like like they have their own ethnicity they speak their own language you know and since they dominate these like high positions of power they make it so that you have to be a part of their in group to even like get a job or else like you can't do shit and so it's kind of like, it almost feels like another new set of like rules that like we're gonna have to be forced to adhere to as you know different types of groups become the majority. I don't know. It's an interesting conversation to me, I feel. Like it's, it's, it's an interesting conversation. Um, 
in terms of just resources and, and and again like not wanting to also even talk about like the fact that there's a lot of internalized anti-blackness wrapped up in this and just creating another set of standards for black americans to like shut us out of things in the country that we built right i don't know really interesting topic to me let me, let me know what you guys think uh, if you have kids if you don't have kids if you're planning on having kids if you're not planning on having kids i've been thinking a lot about also like the morals and ethics behind, you know, even like having children in this day and age as well. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Car video. Hopefully it wasn't too loud. My apologies if it is. Peace.